I had to check my screen twice today when I saw the publicly traded company LinkedIn down 43%. I thought it was a very weird number. I was like, how, how can they do a share split and have it be down 43%? Usually when you see a, a, a share split, it's down maybe 49% or even 48.97. Like it's, it's never down an equal 50% because there's always a few people that sell thinking the market actually pushed the stock down 50%. But when I saw LinkedIn's price down 43%, it was a very weird number. And I, <laughs> I didn't really understand how the stock split happened. Well, it turns out there was no stock split and that the stock was down 43% today. We are in a unstable, unpredictable market, and we have been since we've been in red light mode, and this is the symptoms of unpredictable, volatile, sideways markets. And sideways markets, I mean that more emotionally because they can very much go down. Um, it is not usual to see stocks basically get cut in half like that. But that's where we are today. The S&P 500 is in a channel and it has been in a channel for 18 to 19 months. It's about a 13% channel. And until it decides what to do, either break below and move down to the 2007 highs or move up and break out to new lifetime highs, we have a lot of volatility in front of us. Now, I'm actually not going to talk about the S&P. I have something that I think, though the S&P is very interesting, what's going on in the markets are very interesting. But I want to turn my attention to another major um, asset and one that's doing uh, some interesting things that I think we should put our attention to. Hey, everybody. This is RC Peck, and this is my weekend podcast. And the theme for this weekend is... I see higher gold prices. Now, of course I see higher gold prices. The question is, when do you see higher gold prices, Miss Fortune Teller? And that becomes a little trickier. So I've put together nine <laughs> price charts that I want to show you with gold. Gold has done very well this year with the market down 8%. Gold is up almost 11%. So that's a 19 percentage point difference. But gold is still in a downward trend. And then we will look at that. And it's still down four and a half years in a row. So it's been a pretty painful four and a half years. But let's see what's going on with the market with, with the stock market and so much instability. Gold is starting to firm up. And so the question then has to be, is this the bottom in gold? Like, is this it? Four and a half painful years of being wrong if you wanted gold to go higher? Is, is this actual the bottom? And, you know, with what's going on in the U.S. dollar, though that is just in a sideways channel, um, I want to turn to the price charts and let them answer that question to give us clarity on what is happening. So with that, I first want to look at four currency price charts. They're all relative ratio charts, and I'll, I'll describe what that means in a second. But the first thing I want to do is look at four currency charts. So the first chart is the gold, is gold, the gold, is gold being compared relative to the Japanese yen. And if you want gold to go higher, what you're going to want to see is that blue line consistently go higher. And that blue line is a 70-day exponential moving average. And over the last four and a half years, it is it is kind of going higher. Like if you were to look at the bottoms, the, the valleys of it each time, it's getting the valleys are getting higher, right? But the peaks are getting lower. So it's kind of confused right now. And all that means is gold is not necessarily appreciating or depreciating when compared or when purchased in the yen. It's just kind of going sideways. Now, yes, we've had a big move up here, and that is something we want to take note. But what's most important or what's more important is the direction or the trend of that 70-day exponential moving average. And yes, it has bottomed. But when you kind of do a quick look at this ratio, it's really confusing and sideways. And we want to see a ratio that has a nice, smooth blue line going higher. The next 
ratio I want to look at is gold being compared to the U.S. dollar. And as you can see, this 70-day exponential moving average, it's still moving lower. Yes, it's bottomed out here, but it's bottomed out many times before it's even risen many times. But this is, you know, here's all the bottomings it's done over the last four and a half years. So there's been many bottomings over the last four and a half years. And this is gold priced in U.S. dollars. Now, this is a good move up, and we have the yen. Um, we have gold moving up against the yen, and we have gold moving up against the dollar. So that's good. You want to see the dollar. You want to see gold moving up against all major currencies, just not one. And so far, we have gold moving up against the yen and moving up against the dollar. The next relative ratio price chart I want to show you is gold being priced in euros. And again, you can see this. This is the same four and a half years. It bottomed here in 2014. So if you were paid in euros and you started buying gold in 2014, over the last two years, that's been good for you. And you can see the 70-day moving average is, generally speaking, moving higher. So of the last four and a half years, two years, gold, when priced in the euro, has been doing better, for sure better than the, the U.S. dollar. But we want to see this blue 70-day exponential moving average. We want to see a nice up and to the right move. And though we're seeing it, there is a lot of volatility. But it is moving up in the right direction. And gold has moved up nicely over the last month, or really in 2016, against the euro or when priced in the euro. And then last, what I want to show you is gold priced in the Chinese yuan. Now, this is going to look very similar to the U.S. dollar because the Chinese government has spent hundreds of billions of dollars strengthening the yuan so it could stay pegged to the U.S. dollar. But it is a major currency. It is one of the four major currencies on this planet. And what you're going to want to see is that blue line on the price screen moving higher. And clearly over the last four and a half years, it has been moving lower very much with what the dollar has been doing too when priced or with gold when priced in the dollar. But like the other four currencies, gold is moving higher against the yuan. So the takeaway is gold is moving higher in all four major currencies. That is great. That's what we want to see. And what we don't know yet is, is this breakout in gold the last two months um, a kind of a blip in a long-term downtrend, or is this the new start of the next three, four, five years of gold going higher? We don't know that yet, but we do know it has bottomed over the last couple months. Next, I want to show you five price charts, not against currencies, but against um, a couple other different assets. So let's jump into those. The next price chart I want to show you is the miners, gold, precious metal miners being compared to the metal itself. And you want this line to go higher if you're bullish on gold. And as you can see, the same 70-day exponential moving average, it's falling. And you want to see that 70-day moving higher. Now, what I do like about comparing the miners to gold is there was this chant, kind of this sideways little channel here from mid-July to mid-January, if you can kind of see my cursor move around it. And it has clearly broken above that. So the miners are moving higher against the metal itself, against gold itself, and that's good. But what we also want to see is the 70-day moving higher on this price chart, and it is. The next price chart is comparing precious metal miners against the S&P 500. And as you look at the price chart, you can see for the last four and a half years, precious metal miners have been losing to the S&P 500. But... Like the previous chart, precious metal miners have broken out of this seven-month-ish channel and is moving to the upside, and we have the 70-day moving higher too. So we'll want to continue to see that, and we're going to want to see that 70-day exponential moving average continuing to move higher over time. But good sign for the miners being compared to the S&P. The third relative, this is actually not a relative, chart, but this is what people are paying as a premium or a discount for gold through the closed end fund CEF. Now, when you see this blue line falling, that means people are paying, uh, are not wanting to pay 
a premium. In fact, they're paying a discount for actual gold and silver in a Canadian vault. So down here in December of 2014, at the very end of November of 2014, people would only buy gold and silver combined if they got a 13% discount. I mean, this is actual gold and silver that people were getting for a 13% discount. Today, people are paying 7.5% below melt for gold and silver. So it's going higher, but again, on this price chart, you see the blue line still, generally speaking, falling, and it has flattened, it has bottomed here, and it is moving up, but it has bottomed many times before and then has continued falling. So I will keep a watch on this, but yes, people are wanting to pay more now for gold and silver, and what we really want to see is people paying a premium. Here's the 0%. So anything above the 0%, we're going to want to see that if you're bullish on gold and silver because that means people are starting to pay a premium for gold and silver. And people were paying a premium for gold and silver up until the beginning of 2013. The next relative price chart is comparing small mining shares, precious metal mining shares, against large precious metal mining shares. Now, you want to see the small caps beating the large caps. That is a good, healthy sign of a bull market. And we're not seeing that right now. We're not even seeing it over the last six weeks. If you can squeeze in and squint your eyes and look at this, you can see that small cap mining shares are greatly underperforming large cap mining shares. Now, look, here's the thing. We don't have to have every single relative price chart be going up for it to be a good thing. But this is just some kind of internal lookings to see what is going on with the gold industry. So far over the last six weeks, things are looking really good, but more money is flowing into the large caps than the small caps. And look, that may not be a negative thing. It may be that people after four and a half years are just really scared of precious metal mining companies. So if they're going to put money into any mining shares, they're putting them into large cap mining shares. And that could absolutely be bullish. I could spin this in either direction. Um, but historically, you do want to see the small caps going higher, faster than the large caps. And we don't have that right now. The last price chart I want to show you is comparing the price of silver against the price of gold. Again, all things being equal, you want to see silver going up faster than the price of gold. And we are not seeing that right now. Out of all of the nine price charts I've shown you, this possibly is the worst looking one because the 70 day exponential moving average, it's still falling. While almost every other 70 day exponential moving average is moving higher, this one is still falling. So again, we can't expect a perfect, you know, everything aligned and out of the nine relative price charts, seven of them are looking very good. And silver is not necessarily falling. It's just not moving up as fast as gold is. So the question is, what, what is the takeaway? How do, we, how do we interpret this information with what's going on with gold? So, so the first thing is gold has hit a short-term bottom. And it's hit a short-term bottom while the market, the stock market, is really contemplating whether it should break down another you know, 15% or so down to those highs of 2007, which puts the S&P at about 1575. Uh, so we could see another 300 points get dropped on the S&P. So it's a good sign for gold that gold is moving higher when uncertainty has hit the stock market because that is increasing people's concern. And there's only one thing that increases the price of gold, and that is when people increase their concern about the future they buy a little bit more gold. And that's what we're seeing right now. Now, if these charts start moving up, especially that exponential moving average, then the chance that the next big leg up has started for gold and that it's real. But we have time. We have time. This is not, this is not you got to get in right now. And I'm not saying it's bottomed, but it, it could. Um, there will be many stops bus stops along the way to $1,900 gold or $3,900 gold or $5,900 gold along the way. Um, so we have time, 
gold is acting very interesting right now, especially with the uncertainty in the stock market. And it probably, it's worth your attention to looking at it and at least starting to put it on your kind of your horizon or putting it somewhere to stay, keep attention on it because we could possibly see the bottoming of gold right now. Hey everybody, this is just another step in helping you protect your portfolio and protect your future. Until next time, this is RC Peck.